and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton. And now that it's at least teasing us that it's spring, even if we're not quite there, it is time to get outdoors and see what's out there and help make it more beautiful. My guest is Debbie Blanton from the Clean City Commission. Welcome back, Debbie. Thank you. Glad to be here. You're going to get us out and moving and picking up the mess that has accumulated um, over the past I'm few months, right? I'm going to do my very best. <laughs> And also get, get you thinking about um, things that we can do to make Hampton a greener city as spring approaches. That's important too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you guys kind of started as the Keep America Beautiful Anti-Litter Commission. Mm -hmm. We did. And you've really grown into much more of a how can we be greener because right. if you have less impact in the beginning, then you don't have to clean up as much. Exactly. And if people understand the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. so. Um, we just kind of naturally, uh, the litter affects the water, other things affect the water, um, litter affects quality of life, crime, it property does. values. It's a blight issue It is, in some and places. so litter affects so many things, and then as you move out from that circle, there are so many other things that you need to think about. So we have expanded our scope over the years. And I think, too, you know, as Hampton looks at and some people don't like it to be called the broken window theory because that's been used for some pretty severe crackdowns in the right. past. But, but this right. idea that what we look like, our area, mm -hmm. our, if we take pride in our neighborhood, our street, our house, our block, right. we begin to take better care of it and we become better stewards. Of right. That and sort of conversely, if you take better care of your, your neighborhood, your street, your house, then people are less likely to um, infringe upon you by littering or otherwise wreaking havoc mm -hmm. in your neighborhood. Yeah. So it's kind of a, you know, it, it does you good because it makes you feel better. Every time I ask a child when I go to educate in a school, do you want to come to a school that's all filled with litter? And they always say no, they want a clean school. And we all want our neighborhoods to be clean. It's just, figuring out how to make that happen. Okay, so how is it gonna happen? <laughs> That's your job, right? That's my job. Well, for one thing, we need to kind of have a different attitude about our trash. One thing we need to realize is that trash doesn't really go away. I mean, we can put it in the trash can and it can go to the steam plant and it can be burned and made into energy for NASA. Which is, I'm gonna say, I'm so proud of Hampton because we've been Me doing that too. for 30 years or so. Yeah. I mean, it's been a really long time. It has and been. And that hasn't worked in other localities, and there's still some environmental issues we've had to clean up about the um, what's left over, and mm -hmm. it's still problematic. Mm -hmm. But it is a much better solution to turn our trash into energy exactly. than to just pile it up in a giant landfill. Well, and the other thing is, is that Hampton has one last landfill. We have that, that landfill, and there's no land in Hampton for another landfill. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we um, put too much into the landfill, then eventually we're going to have to be taking our trash somewhere else. Yeah. And, and we're not New York City or anything, it. but nobody right. else, you know, and nobody even wants cost. Hampton trash. So even if we don't care about the environment, the truth right. is, it's going to be really expensive for us. Right. So <laughs> we, we just care we about need that. To, we need to have a different attitude about mm -hmm. our trash. It's a resource. It is a symbol, and so we need to, to think about it differently. So, for example, um, when you put your trash in your trash can, tie it up in a plastic bag, and then that way, when the garbage truck comes and dumps, it doesn't litter your trash. Yeah. Packing peanuts, for example, oh, I hate those. all over the neighborhood. Um, so you can tie up your, your garbage, but you can't tie up your recyclables right. because that's processed that. differently. Mm -hmm. But the garbage goes into the steam plant and it gets burned. So it can be tied up and, and it saves you litter at your house. Right, because sometimes people don't litter on purpose. Oh, no, sometimes but... it's absolutely by accident. How many times have you, for example, gotten out of your car and then gone to run your errand, come back and found a tissue that you know was yours lying beside the car? It just kind of followed you out and <laughs> dropped, and you didn't know that it happened. So, you know, we don't always litter on purpose, although a lot of people do, yes. unfortunately. But, um, but taking that first step, tying up the garbage, so that prevents that part of the litter. Um, after trash day is a good time to remember to do this. Just 
go through your neighborhood, your street, whatever portion of it you're comfortable with, just in front of your house, and pick up any litter you see. And then that way, when other people walk by your house, they don't see a bunch of trash and they don't think, oh, I can litter here, that's cool. Because when you, when you set an example by allowing litter in front of your house, it is natural for people to follow that example and create and give you more litter. I mean, yeah. it's just human nature. It is human nature. People will go like, oh, there's no litter there. I can't litter. You know, right. they really, I think they will. It's right. not acceptable. It's, it's that's not a standard. It, it's, yeah, it's a norm and mm -hmm. it's an unconscious thing. People don't really think about it, but it's absolutely the truth that pe people litter more in places that are more littered. And that's why our Adopt-a-Spot volunteers, who I praise to, to the top of the world, uh, they are so important in our city because they do a fantastic job of picking up litter on a regular basis. Otherwise, we'd be swimming in it probably mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Especially in those community spaces. And a lot of those are gateways to Hampton. It's, exactly. You know, ramps and entry streets and major right. roads and right. places that give not just our residents but our visitors a picture of who we are. Exactly. So picking up litter and we have opportunities like, you know, if you find that it's a rewarding feeling and for me it is to pick up the litter in front of my house and on my street because then I just I just feel better. But if you find it's a rewarding experience and you want to expand your boundaries into the rest of the community, we have monthly community cleanups um, the third Friday of each month. So you're welcome to join us for those. You just need to contact us and sign up for them. We have. I'm just going to ask you, because I've, I've done this before when I had a, a Cub Scout troop. Mm -hmm. You have a certain amount of community service projects, mm -hmm. and you're teaching the Cub Scouts, you know, all these things. Right. Is that something that we can do with those groups? It's oh, okay. absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Or if you wanted something that was um, perhaps a more um, formal and recognition-oriented program, you could do the Adopt-a-Spot program. So you could have your Cub Scouts have their name on a street or a park as them being responsible for keeping it clean. And so it that's really works thing. when it's their school or the place, their church, the place right. that you meet regularly exactly. that they take some ownership of right. and that they give back to the exactly. entity that's letting them meet there. And it just makes them feel wonderful. It mm -hmm. makes children in general because I think they get it more than the adults do. Yeah, that, and if they know, get it early, it sticks with them better. Yeah, and, and, it, and they, under, they seem to intrinsically understand, though they may not show that in their rooms, <laughs> they intrinsically that's and that's different. They intrinsically understand that their school or their street or their house looks better when there's not garbage in it. And I can't tell you how often children have complained to me at educational programs about people who throw litter in their yards. They get quite incensed about it. So, um, so participating in a cleanup program. We mm -hmm. also have Clean the Bay Day coming up in June. And that's a huge one. Mm -hmm. And even more important is Walk Hampton Clean, which will be April 21st through 23rd. April Time 22nd Earth is Earth Day, so it's a great way to celebrate Earth Day. And you just pick a street, any street, let us know, we can provide equipment, and you can pick up that area and be recognized for it and you will be helping to keep Hampton clean all over the city. It's a citywide cleanup. And that's, again, April 21st through 23rd. Okay. The schools are participating the, that week, the week before. That's so great. They get to participate, too, at their school grounds, and we're looking forward to lots of participation from that. Those kinds of things, too, teach kids community involvement. And mm -hmm. sometimes, as adults, we're super, super busy, mm -hmm. but we'll do stuff that is kid oriented. Right. <laughs> so, right. so if I can drag because my kid like along, I, I will exactly. make it more of a priority. And it's more a lot fun. of times. Yes. It is it's so a family activity then. It is it's great. and it's great to see the world through kids' eyes. Mm -hmm. They can they can say the most amazing things about trash that make you really understand how important it is to get it off the ground. So all of this trash cleanup that I'm talking about reminds me of recycling. Um, we've added cartons to our recycling. Yes, I, we, I keep I'm so excited. to tell people that that's yes. a big deal. It is a big deal because there are containers that we used to have to throw away that now we can recycle. Mm -hmm. I'm still having a hard time getting it through to other members of my family, but yeah, I'm working on it because it's been such a long ingrained habit mm -hmm. to throw it away. Yep. But um, like milk cartons and juice cartons and gravy and broth, 
um, cartons from the sh store shelf. That sort of, it's like a coated Yeah, coated. Cardboard almost. It looks like paper, yeah. but it's coated mm -hmm. and it has a screw off lid. Um, you can recycle those Yay. now. I mean, yeah. So, and, and then, but don't forget paper of all kinds and metal cans and beverage, food and beverage cans of all kinds, plastic bottles and jugs. No lids. No. <laughs> well, on soda bottles, you can recycle the lids. Oh, okay. On the soda bottles. And that's because they found a vendor who will take that kind of plastic. That's good specifically. to know. So, and then finally, glass bottles and jars, they get forgotten a lot, but it's a really important thing to remember to recycle those things. If you don't reuse them, mm -hmm. reuse is always better. So, you know, keep in mind the recycling. We also have household chemical collections coming up in And that's March a and real May. important. I mean, it's important all year round, but in the spring when is when we all get cleaning. in our garage. We've got the pesticides. We've got right. partial containers of paint, and the mm. house is no longer that right. color. And right. really, it's good to clean all that out. You get rid of the hazard exactly. in your house and dispose of it properly. Properly. That's right. And so those collections are the third Saturdays of March and May, and then July, September, and November. And of course, it's always advertised through the city, but just keep in mind every other month after starting with March. And it's actually every month, it's just you have to go to a different locality. Right, you can, you can go to any other community. <laughs> oh, it's much, much easier. Plus, they've changed the location, oh, and it's going to be down right. on Coliseum Drive at the Coliseum, but close to the embassy suites. Yeah, that's a little, I mean, the, the facility, I mean, Armistead was very convenient for me, but yes. that's more central for the it rest of the It is more central for everybody, and it'll be easy to get in and out, mm -hmm. and it's a good place. Yeah. So, um, so keep that in mind. Household chemicals make me think about the stuff we put on our yards. So if you have um, fertilizer, and you think spring is the time to fertilize, and it is the time to fertilize some glass, grasses, get a soil test first, figure out what you really need to do, and then only use the fertilizer that you need because whatever doesn't soak into your lawn will go into the storm drain and into the Chesapeake Bay. So not only are you feeding your grass, you're also feeding the Chesapeake Bay and causing dead zones in the Chesapeake Bay because right, those blooms because can't, the plants bloom the and then die and then they and they use up the oxygen when they die and then the fish die because they don't have enough oxygen. So it's really kind of a gross thing. Get those soil tests. They're minimal price, and it's from the Virginia Cooperative Extension. And you save money. So, okay, yes. the bottom line is we care about the environment. But if you don't, <laughs> you do care about saving money. Right. So don't put down more than you need. It just washes away. Exactly. Like more is not better and, when it comes and to and fertilizer. And if it doesn't wash away and you've put down too much, grass burns up. Mm -hmm. And so then what do you do? You have to replant all your grass. I mean, it's, it's just you know, use the right amount. But use that soil test to make sure of what you need. Right. Because honestly, your yard may not need to be Especially if you mulch your clippings and right. take good care of things as, as you go. Exactly. That's a natural fertilizer. Exactly. And another way you can get natural, natural fertilizers to have a compost pile in your backyard. And then not only can you take care of some of those leaves and some of those grass clippings if you're worried about thatch, although that's not realistic. That's not what happens. That's not what but, causes it, yeah. But if... If you're worried about it, you can take some of those grass clippings and put them in the compost pile. You can also put vegetable and fruit peelings and trimmings, and you can put eggshells and coffee grounds and tea bags in that compost pile. You can come up with an organic compost, which is like the comp it's part of the composition of the soil. Mm -hmm. And then you can make your yard healthier that way. And or again, I save that from my vegetables. Fertilizer. Those are from yeah. my gardens. <laughs> my right. flowers and my vegetables get the compost. You can use it however grass, you want, whatever. but it will help. Yes, it, it will. It will help. It's good for your soil. And so, you know, here we are. We've talked about um, reducing waste. We've talked about keeping our communities cleaner and be more beautiful. And we've talked about um, composting and food waste. But we also have energy that we need to think about. And okay. spring brings warm temperatures. And we all, well, at least in my house, our th thoughts turn toward air conditioning <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a cold weather person. But um, use a fan to help keep your air conditioning costs down. 
And you only need to use a fan when you're in the room, mm -hmm. so there's no mm -hmm. need to leave a fan Ceiling on all day. Ceiling fans especially are really right. helpful for moving Very a good helpful. bit of air. Yeah. Have, have an attic fan that pulls that comes on when it's too hot in the attic and it pulls some cooler air through the house, mm -hmm. but use fans to reduce your air conditioning costs. And there, um, there's good advice all over the place on the internet, and including at Virginia Dominion Power. They have good advice for saving energy and the EPA and lots of other sites. So, um, and we're going to save water because you have some rain barrel workshops coming we up have where rain we barrel can make workshops. our own rain barrels. Yes, save money because you don't have to use the water to, to water your plants. And you're helping to keep runoff from going into our, our creeks and waterways. It slows it down. It's not that water into the creeks and waters is bad. It's just when there's a lot of rain, they can't handle it. All. Right. It's just too much. Mm -hmm. And so if you save some of it off of your roof, it helps you and it helps our waterways. And we have five workshops coming up in March, April, and May. So check our website for information about that and get signed up for one of those workshops. Yep. We're also on Facebook and we put lots of information yes, about do. coming activities <laughs> on Facebook. Okay, so the website, Debbie, is? Hampton.gov slash HCCC. I know, I can never keep those initials in my brain. HCCC. Okay. Right, for Hampton Clean City Commission. I think City I also put it in as slash clean city because I, I, I can never remember the initials, so I made my own redirect. Or if so you that just I do Hampton Clean City Commission, if you do shut. the search thing, uh -huh. it's really easy to find. It comes right yeah. up. Yeah. And um, one other thing that we need to think about coming with spring and summer is gardening. Uh, you can have gardens at your house. You can have flower gardens, vegetable gardens. You can go through our community garden program, the city's community yes, garden program. Yes, if you program. live somewhere where your backyard isn't suitable, you Which can is me. get right. You can get a plot. Right, it's and wonderful. they're in Phoebus, in North Phoebus, and Buckrow. So they're spread pretty well throughout the eastern part of the city. So take advantage of one of those. Mm -hmm. They're free, and you just plant your seeds or your seedlings and grow some vegetables. I will say organic. we planted a lot of greens last year, mm -hmm. and spinach doesn't do well because it's very finicky when things get hot, and it gets hot around here pretty early. Right. But I had kale for six months. Mm -hmm. Like, it was amazing. It just kept coming and coming. Right. And the cherry tomatoes, I think, are easier to grow mm -hmm. because, again, it gets real hot around here in August, and sometimes... Right. And they just keep on they, coming. But the cherry tomatoes are wonderful, and there's right. easy things right. that you can do that saves a lot of money, helps mm -hmm. you eat healthier, and gets mm -hmm. you a little bit of exercise because exactly. you're out there taking care of it. And, and just um, studies have shown that just being in connection with the earth, like gardening or, or even walking in nature, actually is good for your mental and physical health. Okay. So take advantage of that. All right. Yeah. You bet. I can't wait for spring. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> if only it would stay spring and not summer. <laughs> yeah, spring here is about this long. And I know, summer. and then it's summer. Oh, so. well, we'll get through. Thank yes. you, Debbie. Oh, thank, thank you so, you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you for watching. I hope these are great spring tips for you and you are ready to get out there, help clean up Hampton one little portion at a time and uh, reduce your energy consumption, grow some of your own vegetables. Have a great time this spring.